Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it is an honor and a privilege to be with you. Jazakum ala alf alf khair to my brother Omar Suleiman, Sheikh Omar Suleiman, for all of his, alhamdulillah, his support. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the volunteers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you who are showing up with the intention to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about this particular topic of akhlaq, I feel that it's, it's extremely timely. And that's because our akhlaq is something that we have to constantly be evaluating. It's something we have to constantly think about. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reminded us that akhlaq, like the best of you, right? Inna min khiyarakum ahsanu akhlaq. The best of you, verily, without question, the best of you, are those, subhanAllah, who have the best of character. And so, so many times we have sessions that are about how we can repair our relationship with Allah. So many times we have sessions about how can, how can I love Allah? How can I be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But we never, it's, it's very rarely that we ask ourselves the question, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love me? Right? Because there, and we think that, sometimes we have a thinking that, Allah loves everybody, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, there are verses where he says, Inna, right, in Allah you hibbu as sabirin, mu'sinin, mutawakkilin. But then there are other verses where Allah says, La you hibbu. Allah says, I don't love these people. There are groups of people that Allah says, I categorically don't love them. And so us saying, Ya Rabbi, how can I mold and shape? exactly who I am according to an individual that you will love, according to the characteristics that will, that will cause you to have a, 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 another that I might, gi might gain your gaze. When the Prophet was, was sent to us, the thing that he says is, I was taught to correct good character. I was taught to basically teach you how to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning even in this love, Allah is saying that I want to have a relationship with you that is consistent with the purpose for which I created you. So that, that's the first thing. Because when we look at the root of akhlaq, right? Al-khuluq, that our creation. See, the challenge that we're having today as Muslims is that we are defining our akhlaq based upon somebody else's values, based upon somebody else's definitions. We're saying that as long as I am a good person, as long as I am, you know, as long as I have certain virtues, as long as I'm good in society, then I'm okay. But the question becomes, who is it that's determining what are the qualities of your character? Who is it? Is it, you know, is it social media? Is it Tony Robbins? Is it Oprah Winfrey? Is it, who is it that's determining exactly who are you? And what is the, ter is, is the factor that says, I'm actually somebody that is actually moral, that I'm upright, that I'm virtuous. And so when we begin to understand that Allah is the one who defines that, that's a, that's a huge correction even in our basic, our aqidah, in our basic belief. That Ya Allah, you determine. You determine who I should be. You determine how I should behave. You determine what makes me good or not good. You determine what makes me upright. I want to go to a very, very, very famous narration. We all know it. We could recite it together. It's the hadith of Jibra'il, alayhi salam. Where a man appears, the Prophet وسلم, is sitting in a gathering. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an is relating that he was sitting next to the Prophet وسلم, a man entered into the gathering whose hair was extremely dark, whose clothes were extremely white, and who had no signs of travel. And as he began, he entered into the gathering, he sat next to the Prophet وسلم, folding his legs, his thighs touching the thighs of the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, what did he ask him? We all know it. What did he ask him? You don't have to be quiet, it's not Jummah. What did he ask him? 
what is Islam, right? What is Islam? And then he asked him, what is Iman? Sisters, don't, don't, don't shame us like this. He said, what is Islam? What is Iman? And what is Ihsan? What happened to Come on, we got to work on this. Don't do, don't do this. <laughs> right? What is Islam? What is Iman? And what is Ihsan? And he began to answer. Right? And then I'm going, I'm, I'm fast forwarding through it. And then he asked him about the last day. And the Prophet وسلم, said, the one who's asking knows just as the one who's being asked. Then he asked him about the signs. And then subhanAllah, there was a time period and this, this individual left. The Prophet وسلم, commanded Omar, go get him, go find him. The Omar did as he was commanded. He came back to the Prophet وسلم, and said, Ya Rasulullah, it's as if he's banished. And he said, do you know who that was? He said, Allah and his messenger know best. And he said, subhanAllah, this was Jibra'il coming to teach you your deen. I quote this particular narration, this hadith of Jibra'il, for the sake of us examining certain aspects of it. One of the first things that I love is that this teaches us is about what is our, how do we actually attain anything? How do we actually attain anything as it relates to knowledge or understanding, a connection with Allah, a connection with the Prophet How do we attain that? The first thing is you've actually got to attend the gathering. You've got to be one who shows up. You've got to say, I was with, I was with the company of the believers. I was in the majlis where Allah and his messenger were, were, were literally descending knowledge upon us. And then subhanAllah, you sit in that gathering and you ask a question. And the reason why I say that we ask the question is because what it first says is, even though this is Jibra'il alayhi salam in this case, what it says is I'm an empty vessel. I have questions and I'm patient enough to wait for the answer. That many times in our day and time today, we have a lot of questions. We're questioning, of course, our society. We're questioning the way that we've been taught. We're, que we're questioning almost everything and that's not a bad thing. What becomes challenging is whether or not we have the patience to wait for the answer. Whether or not we're interested, right, in someone answering a question according to the definitions I've already defined, or whether or not I'm interested in hearing the answer, what does Allah and his messenger have to say about it? Then it goes, and this is even, that part is even furthered at the end when he said, do you know who that was? SubhanAllah, they're even afraid to guess. They say, Allah and his messenger know best. This, we say it, but do we truly, truly, deeply, deeply believe in that? That Allah and his messenger know best. So when it gets into these other questions, the questions of la ilaha illallah, I'm looking for this time. It's important. <laughs> so when we get into these questions of Islam, this is a question of what must I do? What do I have to do in my body to be in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When it comes to the question of Iman, it says what do I have to think? What do I have to believe? What do I have to wrap my mind around? What is it that I have to wrap my heart around that I can be considered those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? that I would be consistent with my shahadatain. What is it that I've got to think? And then lastly, of course, the case of what is ihsan? The question is, what should be the way and the character? What should be the internal qualities of my soul? Because these things, the mind and the body and the soul, are actually going to determine not only my akhlaq, because akhlaq is, should be an extension of our identity. That our character, our personality, our behavior should be, and it should be that which shows, it should be the demonstration of what we really believe. It should be the demonstration of the condition of my soul. See, sometimes we think that I act a certain way and it's okay, Allah knows my intention because this is what I believe. So we try to separate, right, our akhlaq, our behavior, our character, claiming that we believe something else. But if you truly believe that, then your character would be something else. 
See, actions speak way louder than words. Actions actually show exactly who you are. And this is not a question about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's values. This is not a question about Allah's mercy. It's not, a que we're not, we're, it's not even for us to think, well, Allah will have mercy on me. Therefore, it excuses me from certain behavior. As if I am an owner of the value of Allah's mercy. Allah said, I didn't ask you. There's, you know, recently, myself and... Sheikh Omar are dealing with a, a particular message that was sent out recently. And one of the things that came out about that, one of the statements that was made that broke my heart, and I want to address it with you today, inshallah, and it was a statement that was said about a particular, a prostitute. We know this narration. There was a prostitute who gave water to a dog. She took off her shoe and she gave water to a dog. She saw this thirsty dog and she gave water to it. And so, subhanAllah, she was, you know, we're talking about Allah's mercy. Now, on one hand, what that has done for us, sadly, it didn't really do it, but what we've taken it to do for us is to say that Allah's mercy, surely if Allah forgave this sex worker, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us for all of our mistakes. But here's the challenge with it. Does it allow me to be a prostitute? Does it give me permission to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Saying that I'm depending on his mercy and his forgiveness. As long as, I gave, as long as I give water to a thirsty dog, then it's okay whatever I do over here. See, in reality, I'm not an owner of Allah's mercy. I'm hoping and I'm praying for Allah's mercy. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when my servant calls on me, yes, I'm in, tell them I am indeed near and I respond to their call, but let them also respond to my call. Meaning, yes, I'm going to answer your dua, but that doesn't excuse you from obedience. And so when we talk about akhlaq, akhlaq is about an intentional decision to mold and shape my mind, my speech, my actions, my behaviors, my intention, my virtues, my values based upon what Allah and his messenger have decided is best. That's what akhlaq is. So the first akhlaq we have to have was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's, there's a new statement that, you know, we, we, I've seen it so many times. On, it's people's tagline, you know, when they're, when they're signing, uh, basically sending an email. And in the email at the bottom, it says, before I submit, I understand. Before submitting, I understand. Raise your hand if you've seen that. Right? Before submitting, I understand. It says, subhanAllah, this is actually the opposite of our deen. Because are we actually, are we literally waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to explain his deen to us? Are we literally waiting for us to be somehow in, like, Allah, explain it to me, make it clear for me. You got to make this before I decide. And, I'm, and I, make me understand it. When I understand it, then I'll do it. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. The reality of submission, the reality of submission is the gift of it is understanding. That literally, subhanAllah, our job and our responsibility, that's why there's so many, there's so many virtues and insight and, and discernment that come out of salah. This is why you pray salatu istikhara before you actually act upon a thing, whether it's I'm going to move here, I'm going to marry this person, I'm going to do that. Allah says, come to me first. Submit to this ibadah first. Submit to this sujood first. Because inside of the sujood, inside of you submitting yourself to me, I'm going to give you the answer. Not once I have the answer, then I'll talk to Allah about it. I ain't saying, Allah, now get behind my decision. That's the opposite. That's not how we work. And so understanding that my akhlaq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first is to come to Allah with haibah. It's to come to Allah with humility. It's to come to Allah saying, Ya Rabbi, I'm asking you by your, inf by your names. And ask by the names he's told you. SubhanAllah. Every door has its key. 
every subhanallah has a, and everything has a method of approach. Everything has a methodology by which it should be practiced. If I'm going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm saying there's haybah, there's humility, there's khushru inside of my heart, then therefore when I approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course not only am I going to do it, uh, I'm going to only pray. No, if you're making dua, Jibra'il alayhi salam told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, call Allah by his names. Start with the Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Start with then after that, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Then send salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Then if you if you're like Ya Rabbi, I really want an intimacy with you. I I want to approach you with the posture, the internal posture, that I am sincere in asking for your help and your assistance and your guidance. So you start with the bismillah. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Send salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make istighfar. Empty your heart of the impurities. That's what the istighfar does. It empties your heart of the impurities. So then you say, now my heart is open to receive the khair, the mercy. My heart is open to receive the truth once I empty out the impurities of my by my istighfar. And then call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his names. Now Jibra'il alayhi salam, he gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam a special sauce in this. He said, say, Ya awalin awalin, ya akhirin akhirin, ya dhukuwatin mateen, ya rahimin masakeen, ya arham rahimin. I want to tell you what this dua means and why it's so important. Ya awalin awalin, meaning I'm saying, oh Allah, you are the first of the first. Meaning, whatever problem I'm, I'm having, even if it's a big problem in our society, I'm not the first to deal with it. It's not new to you. The challenges that I'm facing, it's not something you don't know about. It's not something you don't have a solution to. So I don't need to go outside of your deen in order to find a solution that you are the first of the first, so you know it. You created this world. You are the creator of this world in these circumstances. You're awalin awalin. And you're akhirin akhirin. You're the, you're the last of the last. Meaning that when all this world goes to shreds, when it's crumbled, when it, when it literally, when the earth sinks into the hellfire, Ya Allah, you shall remain. You shall remain. And whether or not where I will stand with you, that shall remain. And so I'm coming to you, you are the last of the last. My destiny is with you. So that's who I'm coming to. Ya awalin awalin, ya akhirin akhirin, ya dhukuwatin mateen. Oh, you who are the owner of power. I'm saying, Ya Rabbi, I don't have the power, you have the power. I don't actually know, I don't actually have the power to fix my situation. I don't actually have the power to change an entire world. I actually don't have the power to enact or to implement that which I'm coming to you about. I actually don't have the ability to see until next week. I can't see really what's going to happen next month. I really can't see it. But I know you can. You're the one of, of, of the, the owner of power. And you're Mateen, you're the one who's going to solve, you're the solver of all problems. And I recognize you as that. And the one who is the merciful to those who are impoverished, to those who are in need. Oh, the most merciful of those who show mercy. Now, that's our first doorstep. That's our first step with akhlaq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then be patient and wait for the answer. Don't say, well, I pray, didn't get anything. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I wanna do now. Right? No, be patient. Have sabr. Right? Istainu bi sabri wa salah. With sabr wa salah together. And then when you form a decision, when you, get, when you get ready to form that decision, make sure it's according to Allah and His Messenger. I want us to have how do we have akhlaq with ourselves? How do we have akhlaq with ourselves? The first, I'm going to say stop. 
breathe. Examine your intentions. Why in the world are you doing this? For what purpose do, are you doing it? What are you seeking? What do you want, really? And then interrogate your nafs. Interrogate your nafs. Are you doing this because you want to be, because you want to be seen? Are you doing this because out of fear? Are you doing this because you want to be connected to a group of people out of status? Are you doing this for the money? Are you doing, what, what, interrogate your nafs. And then if you're doing it for the people, what are you expecting to get from them? Have akhlaq with yourself by interrogating your own nafs. Why? Because you're saying, I don't know what you're doing right now, but I'm making sure you're in check. <laughs> I'm making sure you're not out of line. Because you can't, you can't rule over my soul, nafs. So I need to make sure that you're in alignment. Then, subhanAllah, after you've examined your nafs, you've examined your intentions, then you're going to say, how, how when the Prophet ﷺ was in a similar in a situation, how did he act? When the Qur'an addressed this particular situation, we research everything else. How to build a tiny house, how to, um, how to tie my shoe, how to do this, how to, how to do my scarf right, whether or not. We research everything except some of our biggest decisions. And do when we do our research, are we researching it, right? To say, I want to know how Allah and his messenger addressed this particular issue. Then we decide on a plan. Then we say, now I'm going to mold and shape my thoughts, my actions, my behavior upon this. I want us to close with this. One of the biggest things that we're under attack as Muslims have been for a long time is our character. Is about how our external is actually speaking loudly for us about our internal condition. So we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbi, I'm asking you to mold and shape me into a servant of yours with whom you're well pleased. Oh Allah, I'm asking you to mold and shape me to the qualities that you love. The ones, there's seven in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I love these qualities. Oh Allah, give me all seven of them. Make me, the, make me this person. So that when I act in the world, I'm representing you properly because that's the job of akhlaq. Ultimately, it's to say, Ya Rabbi, how am I representing you? Because that's the job you gave me. That's what Khalifa is, to be a representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, we do everything in our power to make sure, Ya Rabbi, don't leave me. Don't leave me to my own self. Don't leave me to mold and shape it on my own. But bless me with your assistance and bless me to understand the Prophet in a manner by which then I, just like the Prophet was the walking Quran, let me act and behave and be like the, the character of the Prophet Give me his personality. Why? Because then and only then, then and only then can we be absolutely certain that we would be listed from those that Allah loves. And Sheikh Omar mentioned before he left this stage, he mentioned that narration about when Allah loves you. Not only will he go to war for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will become the eyes in which you see, the mouth in which you speak, the hands in which you take action, the feet in which you travel. Meaning I will give you not only will I give you power, I will give you true influence, but then you can be exactly who I created you to be, which is the great caretaker, the great enforcer, the great influencer, the great Khalifa of this earth, one that is certainly, certainly empowered by Allah Azza wa Jal. Jazakumala Abkhir. Assalamu alaikum.